Welcome back to part two of our game day appetizer series. So we are making like a two part dish, but really it's all gonna be in one, just married together. I know you guys are waiting, waiting. It is whipped feta and bruschetta dip. Now let me tell you, the bruschetta that we're gonna make, I make this once a week. I put it on my breakfast, dinner, whatever it is. Oh, it's so good. And the whipped feta is super trendy right now. And then we are going to have a little baguette as kind of the serving device. So, I actually wanna flip it this way. We are going to cut on the diagonal our baguette. Now, I'd say about yay wide. You don't want it too wide because then it's not gonna get crispy enough, but then you don't want it too thin because then it gets too crispy. Do you know what I'm talking about? So that's probably good. And again, your serrated knife will be your best friend in this. Mm. And I have some tips for when we actually pop this in the oven. We'll get to that at the end, but I like to cut the bread first, especially if you're using the same cutting board because you don't wanna to cut tomato, it's all liquidy, and then cut the bread up, so. We'll do that first, okay. Just for the sake of the cooking show, I'm just gonna cut half, but obviously you're gonna to wanna to cut one, if not two. Mm -mm -mm. And if you go to the grocery store and they have the freshly baked bread, yeah, that's the money, okay. This little guy does not want to cut through. Okay, there we go. Okay, perfect. So, just gonna lay these out. Perfect. And this little guy can go over there for now. Okay, so bread. Push that off to the side. We are good on that. Now to the whipped feta. So I have a food processor. Now I want to mention that you don't need to use a food processor. You could use a blender. That's fine too. But I got this and I wanted to use it. Okay, so we have a block of feta cheese. Oh baby. I love feta. Honestly, I didn't start eating cheese till like a few years ago. That was just not something that I was into back in college, but oh, now the feta, the goat cheese is so delicious. Okay, so we have, I'm just gonna step out of camera because I need to get a spoon. Forgot that. <laughs> we have three quarters of a cup of Greek yogurt. Now, you guys know I love to use plain Greek yogurt in my recipes. It's a little bit healthier, it's just as creamy, but you could use sour cream if you want, or you could use um, cream cheese, but I don't know. I'm trying to be a little bit on the lighter side here. So there you go. And what we're going to do, okay, I have four garlic cloves here. They all have their own purposes, but we will be just popping one in here. So I'm just going to just chop it into four, just to make sure that once we do mix all this up, that it actually will be fully mixed, if you know what I mean. We're going to add a little bit of freshly ground pepper. Mm, so good. And a little bit of salt. Perfect. And then last but not least, the juice of half a lemon. Now, it's really funny because my parents watch all of these. Shout out to you, mom and dad. But my dad was like, Allison, I think you're putting the lemon in wrong. Do you put it in this way? Because that makes most sense. But then it sprays out the sides. So I watched some people and they do it this way. Cause I've always done it that way. My dad's like, I just want to make sure you're doing it right. So I guess you guys can let me know which way do you guys use it? Honestly, as long as the lemon comes out, does it really matter? But, oh yeah, it's a juicy lemon. 
Okay. Lemon. And then see, we got all the seeds at the bottom there. So I think it works, but whatever way, it doesn't really matter. Okay. Pop the lid on. These things can be finicky. So can this. Okay, hold on. You don't want that. There you go. <laughs> okay. Now mine just has two chop and grind. We're gonna wanna use the grind method. Hmm. It is not happy with me, guys. You guys, food processor just did not wanna work on me. <laughs> So everything has been moved to a blender. Remember I mentioned food processor or blender? So there you go. Anyway, um, power on, pulse, rider's light. Okay, this is one of the fancy ones. Um, what I do want to do is add a little bit of olive oil to a few tablespoons, but watch it because you want to make sure that it's getting all mixed up. So. You're at a Greek restaurant because you know they always have feta going. Okay. Make sure that all the sides are down. This blender is like so intense. Um, okay. And then do one little last pulse. Yum. Okay. So this just gonna go in the back while we work on the rest of our recipe. Just pop that out of frame real quick. Okay, so feta, whipped feta is done. Now we are going to get our bowl here and we're on to the bruschetta portion of the recipe. Now, I mentioned earlier that I love, absolutely love bruschetta. Roma tomatoes, garlic, basil. Does it get much better than that? No, not really. At least not in my book. So I have four to five Roma tomatoes here. Now I'm just going to cut off the edge because I'm sorry, when you're eating bruschetta, you don't want to eat a bite of the top. That's just me. Then we're gonna Cut it in half. And then I'm gonna take a spoon. I have a little discard bowl and I'm just going to spoon out the middle. Now, I've made this a bunch whoo, of times. You can keep the middle in. It's just going to be a lot more watery than you would like. Now, the whole thing with the bruschetta, which I love and you can make ahead of time and it like marinates in the fridge but you're putting olive oil and the garlic in it. So I'd rather have that as kind of the more saucy part uh, rather than the inside of the tomatoes. That's just me though. You know, if you don't mind, then that's fine. So again, chopping up. And honestly, I'd make 
a huge batch because like I mentioned earlier, I put this on eggs and toast, a little bit of burrata. Oh, I could do a whole recipe just on what I make with the bruschetta, I'm not kidding. <laughs> um, so it does make a big batch. And actually, I found my love for this because Trader Joe's has their own. So if you really just want to kind of do the easy route out, go in the refrigerated section and they'll have this. But honestly, these Roma tomatoes, it was like 99 cents a pound at the grocery store. It's like nothing. So I think it's worth making and then you can decide, you know, how much salt, pepper, whoops, you'd like. And then save the insides of these tomatoes. Still tastes good, just not for the use that we have for this game day appetizer. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, I promise I'm almost done here. Okay, put this to the side. Yum, yum, yum. Now, we're just gonna dice. No, I mean, not too terribly small. I kind of like a bite with mine, so. Like a large dice. And then once you take out the center, that's where the having more of the tomatoes, you know, about five really comes into play. Mm -mm -mm. So this is just, I don't know if you guys remember on social media that whipped feta was the thing. Oh my goodness. Everywhere you look, somebody's making whipped feta. And what I actually saw, which might, I didn't try it, but now that I'm saying it, it might work. They love to do the whipped honey with, sorry, <laughs> whipped feta with honey. So adding a little bit of honey into the blender, you know, give it a little bit of the sweetness. This is just so savory for me that I feel like, I don't know, I could probably do without, at least with this dish, but hey, if you have some honey, especially fresh local honey, it's good for you, good for your allergies. Mm. That is yum. So this is kind of my fresh and updated take on the whipped feta trend. But it's so good. And honestly, yeah, I mentioned that it's like a few part, but in all reality, it's not that many ingredients. And it's gonna be so fresh, and your family is going to be impressed if you bring this to their game day party. Okay, yum, yum, yum. Last tomato here. Oop. Okay. Don't ask me why this is a very small bowl, but it is. <laughs> Pop all of these in here. Don't mind us. Okay, garlic. Two pretty giant cloves of garlic, not gonna lie. But I have my garlic press here, and I've used this before, but I'm ob obsessed with it. Ready? What was that, two seconds? Mm. And honestly, more garlic the merrier in this recipe. Oh, it's so good. So you just kind of want to take out that guy. Oops. Pop the second one in. Oh yeah. And oh, the garlic just, remember how I mentioned everything marinates? Oh, it's so good. So we have a quarter cup of olive oil. I eyeball it. I honestly think you can't have too much, but that's just me. Freshly cracked, pep cracked pepper, yum. Salt. And salt and tomatoes will also help to bring out the sweetness of it. Okay, now I have always cut basil by 
laying the leaves into each other, rolling it up like a little cigar, and then cutting it. But then I was listening to a chef, and they were like, don't cut the basil. Pull the basil apart. So that's what we're gonna do. I thought, why not? You could at least try it. See if you're feeling it. But if you don't love, or maybe somebody in your family is not the biggest fan of basil, and you want it to be uh, maybe a little bit thinner, just cut it. I mean, in all honesty, I don't think it's that big of a deal, but here we are. Going to... Now, I pulled a lot out because, oh my gosh, if I could have like a basil candle, mm, I would. Okay, so we'll do, I don't know how many leaves that was. Maybe like six to eight. And again, I get that pretty much. Mm -mm -mm. I'm actually gonna grab the spoon again and just get to mixing. And I'm all about color. Color makes you happy when you see it. And I love that you can see some of those pieces of garlic in there. Oh my goodness. And the longer this marinates, the better. And you know, I'm gonna do all the basil, why not? Oh, it's just so good. And you'll see once we put actually put this on the dish, you can kind of decide how much of the bruschetta you want on top of it, and then the rest can be for you for later. Yum, yum, yum. Okay, so you're probably saying, we haven't touched the bread yet. I know we haven't. Have some olive oil. Just a little drizzle on each. That will just help crisp it up a little bit. Then what we're gonna do, remember, we have our last little clove right here. Cut them in half. Clove, meat, top. Now, you can do this actually before and after it's in the oven. But it, it gives it that hint of garlic without being too garlicky. And this helps actually make sure the whole top is covered in the olive oil. Oh, you guys, it's so good. Little time consuming, and of course I grabbed the smallest garlic clove, so it's kind of falling out of my fingers. But this is just, your friends are gonna be impressed by this. They're gonna be like, ooh, is that garlic bread? And then I would say with the other half of the garlic, you can do it on the back end. But hey, any type of garlic on bread is good with me. So we're gonna pop this in to about a 400 degree oven. You want to make sure that these are gonna be nice and crispy, but please watch them. Just a few minutes and they're gonna be golden brown and then we will get to assembling. Okay, look how beautiful the feta is first off. You just wanna make sure it's nice and even on the bottom of your little bowl here. And then take a look at the color of the tomatoes and the basil right on top. Oh, you guys, with the garlic. I just love it. And it's like the perfect balance of freshness, but also the creaminess. And we put our bread in the oven. Woo, talk about good timing. Nice and crispy, but not too burnt. And honestly, you can smell just a little bit of that garlic. Okay, taste tester number one. Let's see what Gib thinks. Okay, I feel like this appetizer is a little bit out of your comfort zone. Whipped feta and bruschetta. I'm and more, of a, more of a bacon than a tomato guy, but <laughs> let's check it out. Mmm. Mmm. They complement each other, right? That's really good. <laughs> Cheese is delicious, but it's just refreshing, the tomato bite. It's nice before you get into the real savory stuff later. Yeah, exactly. Mm, this is really good. This will impress. I would say you can have it as a dip or pre-make the bruschetta bites. Mm -hmm. Okay, delish. 
I'm really excited for you guys to show off to your family and friends with this A plus recipe. Please let me know what you think and let me know what your favorite game day appetizer is. We'll see you guys next time.